Kimberly Underwood, Senior Editor at FCA International Signal Magazine. I'd like to welcome you to our Signal Media Executive Interview Series. Today I'm speaking with Christian Lees, who is the Chief Technical Officer, or CTO, at ReSecurity, which is headquartered in Los Angeles. Christian is going to talk to us all about all things identity, identity protection, digital identity, identity based attacks, and how identity is the new battlefield. Christian has over 35 years experience in the cybersecurity and information IT industry, sorry, information technology IT industry, creating cutting edge solutions for vulnerability assessment, intrusion detection, network security, and distributed denial of service or DDoS mitigation at companies such as Trustwave, Level 3, MCI, and IBM. Before joining ReSecurity, Christian served for 12 years as the CTO for InfoArmor, a company which was acquired by Allstate. And then most recently, he was the CTO for Vigilante ATI, which was acquired by Zero Fox. In his previous roles, Mr. Lee was responsible for developing and implementing employee protection solutions, EPS, and advanced threat intelligence, or ATI, solutions for global Fortune 100 companies. He also led the integration of proper compliance procedures related to data protection and regulatory requirements for these companies, including standards such as the financial record keeping Sarbanes-Oxley standards, the payment card industry data security standards, or PCI DSS, the GDPR standards, which are Europe's general data protection regulations, and US HIPAA health regulations um, for some examples. You can find more information on ReSecurity's website, resecurity.com, including a data sheet about their contacts product, which is their cyber threat platform used by these Fortune 100 companies, and also by law enforcement and national security agencies across the world. Welcome, Christian. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Kimberly. Uh, that was quite a, a mouthful, huh? That was a, a lot of, uh, I didn't realize how much I've done. Jeez. <laughs> thank you for the warm introduction though, Kimberly. Uh, and thank you to Signal uh, for having me today. It's a great honor. Um, and lastly, I'd like to just give a warm hello to our viewers joining us today. Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for all for, all jo for joining us. Um, can you tell us why identity? Why, why, why choose that topic? Um, so here at ReSecurity, um, you know, we're a platform as a service provider and we are heavily focused on securing one's digital you know, fingerprint um, or whatever you want to call it, whatever that digital print is. Um, and, and ideally, you know, we are of the philosophy that, you know, the detection of a potential threat uh, ideally uh, accelerates threat analysis for not only an individual, but more importantly for an entire organization, right? If we can help, help fast track the detection of, of a threat, um, you know, that's our role. Um, and in terms of why we selected identity, um, you know, it, it, it dawned on me that, you know, I could argue at no other time in history other than present have, you know, cyber criminals or any bad actor had such ease of access to tremendously rich data streams um, and, and, and tr you know, huge data sets. And the threat actors are really, really crafty at, you know, homogenizing that data and attributing it, um, which in turn leads to really highly accurate data. Um, and oftentimes to threat actors near real time. Um, so, you know, I kind of wonder in terms of identity, hypothetically, you know, with so many sources, do threat actors or bad actors have the ability to, you know, hydrate or, or you know, re-enrich or reassemble an identity of their choice? Possibly. Um, but, you know, also, Another reason that we chose identity as the new battlefield is naturally the large amount of vast data that we know that's out there. Um, but it's interesting to me that this is also a point in identity based attacks. You know, defenders and adversaries, you know, face directly towards one another, right? It's, you know, it's almost like they're shooting 
you know, shots across one another's bow, um, you know, whatever, huge uh, password spraying campaign, right? You know, the defender has the opportunity to, you know, receive that and, and, and stop it. Um, so I, I really love the concept of like, you know, these two individuals facing one another, just kind of taking their best shot. Um, so that's why we chose identity. Right, sure. And there's a, there's a lot to talk about there. Um, what is identity? Uh, can you walk us through kind of what's all involved with digital identity these days? Sure. Uh, I, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's a bit of a difficult question to answer, right? Um, because I struggle on what is digital identity? Is it, you know, is it my browsing history? Sure, you know, um, is it my social security? You know, is it my first name, my last name, my date of birth? I, you know, more often, is it is it OTP? Is it is that a, an identity? Uh, a flag that's a yes or no? Is it a two-factor authentication? Is it you know single sign-on federated identity? Um, it's hard to say, and I think it really varies. Identity is dependent upon what the governing body. Is, is protecting or harboring your data. Um, and that hypothetically is an identity, uh, most importantly to the organization that's governing. Right, sure. And how, how big of a problem is identity? Um, mm. Scope and scale of the issues. Sure. How big, that's a very, that's a great question, right? How big of a problem is identity today? Um, what is there 7.9 billion people on earth today, uh, roughly. So let's just cut that in half, call it, you know, 3.8 billion people are internet users today. I would argue that every single person of the internet has in some way or another had their data leaked or breached. And so I think that's a pretty big problem, right? Every yeah. single internet user's data has been breached in some fashion. Yeah, and how often is identity-based attacks kind of the source or the culprit or cause of cyber incidents? Kind of what, what are you seeing there? Um, you know, I, I mean, I would say that it is very high. Um, some say 61%, you know, up to 70%. Uh, identity-based attacks are the source of, of uh, you know, an incident. Um, along with that, maybe second highest is, is inadvertently leaked data, right? Insecure data that's in the cloud. Um, so I would say it's roughly 60 to 70% of the time identity is, is based attacks are, are the culprit. And then how do you know, how, how, how do people figure out that identity is this kind of root cause, I guess? Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I think that the, you know, the Goliath organizations, the mammoth organizations, you know, many of which are our partners today, um, you know, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, uh, you know, Google, they're massive and they're very advanced. Um, and they spend a tremendous amount of, of capital. They invest a tremendous amount of capital uh, into their infrastructure and they invest in you know, high dollar people. So they invest a lot of man hours or labor. Um, and, and we regularly see you know, these type of uh, campaign, identity-based attack campaigns against these organizations, right? Uh, and they are not only uh, impacting, you know, consumers, but they're also impacting, you know, enterprise organizations. Um, so it's, uh, you know, we, we see these type of attacks regularly. And it, it can be, again, it can either be a cyber criminal or it could be a nation state. And then how, how do different um, organizations who are impacted kind of by these large identity-based attacks um, you know, how do they deal with it or how, how does the problem, I guess, present itself, um, the larger kind of attacks? Right. 
Um, well, I mean, you know, there, there, there is some collaboration. Um, having the ability to recognize that a credential has been compromised from, you know, another third party is of high importance, you know. Um, you know, I would also say that when there are these, you know, mammoth leaks that all come out and just like terrorize us for, you know, weeks and weeks, um, you know, many organizations not long ago, I suspect were like, Phew, wasn't us, man, thank goodness, you know, wow, that's, ah, uh, sucks to be them. And I think organizations no longer do that because they go, well, I should probably have a look at that data that came out that was leaked to make sure that I don't have any, you know, users reusing the same username and password for their own ecosystem, right? So I think, you know, that's an example of uh, <clears throat> industry growing and, and naturally the advancement of technology and recognizing, you know, auto automated uh, attacks or, uh, you know, it's very difficult. Right, because many of these attacks are proxied around through the world. Right, uh, more often today, uh, we're seeing a lot of residential proxy use, which is very difficult to 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 defend against. Right, sure, and I know um, some of your experience is um, for the Fortune 100 companies and other organizations. Um, you know, helping to integrate the proper com compliance procedures related to data protection and regulatory requirements. Can you talk about kind of identity needs there and kind of the considerations of these um, standards that are required and kind of data protection and then maybe how that ties to kind of your platform. Hmm, yeah. <clears throat> Excellent question. Um, in terms of, you know, framework. I believe your question was kind of how does security framework or you know frameworks uh, compliance how do they tie into protecting identity? Would that be yes? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, gosh, anyone that has gone through these you know governing security frameworks, um, it's maddening, right? They're massive. They're huge, and really difficult for organizations that are that are really large right um and and have had a long tenure of of being you know as a compute node right sometimes it's it, it's a lot of work for them to gain compliance right even even like SOC 2 um it really digs in uh and and has a look at, at your environment right so you know i think that pretty much all uh you know, frameworks all point to a similar thing, right? You know, like PCI, you mentioned PCI DSS 3.0. Okay, what are you doing? Oh, well, we're protecting card uh, holder information. Um, ISO 2007001 or two. Uh, very similar kind of like frameworks all pointing towards similar things. Um, you know, show me how you do this. Show me that you have done uh, an incident response desktop uh, campaign. Uh, this year. So, you know, the more compliance becomes, you know, kind of our first step, I do believe it will help uh, identity. And I think there was a second part to your question. Um, oh, I just wanted to kind of talk, ask about the platform that you have your contact, one of your contacts, I guess it's called contacts. Oh, contact, yeah. You may have other products, but Kind of how does that tie into kind of as a solution? Oh, yeah, I, I actually kind of remember uh, what I was thinking. Uh, and I will answer that. Um, sometimes uh, these frameworks may actually refrain an organization from actually having this data that, that, that we offer, right? Because it may be in violation of, of, of that framework. Um, but Methodologies in which uh, organizations leverage our, our platform are, you know, obviously, you know, any kind of data that we've contextualized to that vendor or our client, 
you know, we're shooting it over and asking them to acknowledge, right? Hey, is it valid? Is it not, right? You know, um, helping give us direction towards, uh, you know, pivoting our collections if we have to. Um, but, you know, the amazing ability to alert someone in an organization that, you know, one of their employees may have had a credential compromised or, uh, you know, there's some sort of threat and, you know, us sending it to that organization in a near real time manner, uh, enabling that organization to remediate that or, hey, let's just change that password, right? Or uh, let's throw even better, let's throw two factor on there. Um, you know, these are methodologies in which uh, organizations use our context uh, platform. Um, also, you know, we are the world's largest aggregator of botnet logs. Easy for you to say, aggregator of botnet logs. Um, and, and this is incredible, right? Having the ability to um, narrate a story of, of a machine that's compromised and every, like essentially at that point, <clears throat> threat actors can take the actual user's computing environment and, and masquerade as them, right? Um, so, you know, that's another example of, of, of using the context platform. <clears throat> Having the ability to see a compromised user of your own log into your ecosystem or your web portal um, and having the ability to reach out to that client and say, listen, there, there might be something up that we need to have a look or simply, you know, sanction off the, the portal until that user has reached some sort of remediation, remediation stage. Right, sure. And how do you see identity as the new battlefield kind of emerging over the next couple of years? Any trends or kind of what to watch out for, things like that? Well, <clears throat> I think uh, I think it, it, it's actually kind of a, a mixed bowl. Um, naturally, uh, uh, you know, I, I have great concern about the wide and vast sources that bad actors have today, right? Um, and th the amazing ability they have of, of tooling, right? It's something that we should talk about more at, as a whole. Right, tooling of, of threat actors, um, essentially like streamlining it and making it faster um, and and more accurate. Um, so, in terms of identity over the next couple of years, I, I really worry about how much data is out there, how well threat actors are narrating the story for some sort of campaign or compromise. Um, I worry about the ability to. As I mentioned before, rehydrate any identity they want based upon the many, many different mega, you know, silos of data that they have. <clears throat> and I also worry about, um, I, I think that that's really the big thing to worry about, right? Uh, I guess some of the other uh, things that have manifested from that ability is is organizations like threat actors ability to do something controversial like lap, lapsus. Uh, we recently uh, reported that lapsus uh, was alleged to be uh, recruiting internally of, co of corporations for access, right? And I, to me, that's just like mind blowing. Um, you know, we think that that will be a trend in the, in the near future, right? You know, blazing acts like that, you know. Um, but also they have, the, they already have technically a piece of the identity of, of every employee and, and, and what um, mannerism will they leverage to gain control is what I would worry about over the next couple of years. Yeah. And any other advice to, you know, even the federal government or military officials who kind of have to contend with identity issues, especially as they kind of try to roll out other cybersecurity measures such as zero trust, and they've kind of have to work on that identity piece to go with that. What, what advice would you have for that? For that? Well, naturally, um, you know, I, I think that if I were a major corporation and, uh, you know, I have a lot to protect, 
um, you know, I would I would investigate some sort of 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 identity monitoring within the dark web for all employees, right? Um, because that's a great thing uh, to a find it, alert upon it, right? You know, yes, we all need to be watching Sim, and we all need to be watching our perimeter, and we all need to be doing better at you know 802 and cube segmenting our environment. Um, but why not also have kind of a perspective what's out in the dark web or what's out in, in illegitimate spaces. Um, you know, implementing some sort of identity monitoring for your employees, treating them like they're an actual node on the network, right? Not just that, you know, person behind a keyboard um, that clicks on every pop-up. You know, I think that would be a quantum leap. All right, those are most of my questions. Anything else you wanted to add or uh, other advice or experience you wanted to share with us? Um, no, I mean, I think that, you know, we've really covered it all, right? Why did we choose identity as a bad battlefield, as the new battlefield, right? Because it's, the actors have just lakes, reservoirs of data. Um, and, you know, we need to leverage, you know, more advanced tools much like bad actors are doing, right? Um, you know, look at bad actors out there uh, tooling uh, a, a tool called Paranoid Checker, you know? It's just mind blowing that, that they can do that. And, and you know, we, we need to match that as well um, because it's a dynamic uh, ecosystem of, of threat actors. Sure, sure. Well, thank you, Christian, for walking us through these identity related considerations. And thanks to all of you for joining us. For more information, more, excuse me, more information about ReSecurity, please visit their website, resecurity.com. And thanks and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you.